friends in Christ. In this Lenten season, we have heard our Lord's call to intensify our struggle against sin, death, and the devil, all that keeps us from loving God and each other. This is the struggle to which we were called at baptism. Within the community of the church, God never wearies of forgiving sin and giving the peace of reconciliation. On this day, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor and enter the Paschal celebration reconciled with God and with one another. Merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may be seated. At this time, you may come forward for individual absolution, kneeling or standing at the rail to receive the absolution to you explicitly.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Let us pray. Holy God, source of all love, on the night of his betrayal, Jesus gave us a new commandment, to love one another as he loves us. Write this commandment in our hearts and give us the will to serve others as he was servant of all. Your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall mark for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the tenth of this month they are to take a lamb for each family, a lamb for each household. If a household is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join its closest neighbor in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided in proportion to the number of people who eat of it. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a year old male. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th day of this month. Then the whole assembled congregation of Israel shall slaughter it at twilight. They shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and the lintel of the houses in which they eat it. They shall eat the lamb that same night. They shall eat it roasted over the fire with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. Do not eat any of it raw or boiled in water, but roasted over the fire with its head, legs, and inner organs. You shall let none of it remain until the morning. Anything that remains until the morning, you shall burn. This is how you shall eat it. Your loins are girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand. And you shall eat it hurriedly. It is the Passover of the Lord. For I will pass through the land of Egypt that night and I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt, both human beings and animals. On all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be a day of remembrance for you. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord. Throughout your generations, you shall observe it as a perpetual ordinance. The word of the Lord.
a reading from 1 Corinthians. For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. The word of the Lord. Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, Lord. Now, before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simeon, Simon Iscariot, to betray him. During supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. But Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, One who has bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason, he said, not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe, and had returned to the table, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if you, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example, that you should do as I have done to you. Very truly I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, You are blessed if you do them. Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. 
If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples. If you have love for one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord. Dear friends, grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Words. Words. Lots and lots of words. Our scripture lessons were full of lots of words, some of which I know were going over you because you were glazing over a little. Lots of words in church, days, three full days of lots and lots of words. Texts spoken, texts sung, texts prayed. Jesus spoke many words. But tonight, he gave his final lesson. And it seems as though when words were not enough, he decided to use some signs and symbols and action too. He showed them in this, his last teaching moment with his followers, his students, his disciples, his friends, one might almost say his family of choice. These whom he had gathered together, even the one who he knew would betray him. You notice Judas is there through the whole thing. Not till the end does he leave. He tells them love. Love for one another. Love as I loved you. That is what I'm all about. That is the heart of my gospel, my mission. That's my work to show you love that you might love one another. He shows it by then the master taking the role of the servant, taking off his outer robe, taking off his signs of power and prestige, his, his best, to roll up his sleeves and show his under <laughs> clothing, right? His, his lesser self takes a towel, takes a basin, washes their feet. One of the commentaries I was reading actually said that, um, from a Jewish resource, that in that time, not only was foot washing the action for servants and slaves, in fact, it was forbidden for a Jewish slave to wash a Jewish man's feet. It was that degrading. The idea that they, they could do it if they were slaves to the Romans or Rosen, but to them, that was to be so removing of any sense of dignity and decorum. It could not be done. And so for their rabbi to take such a low place, the role of the servant, of course, Peter is then shocked. You're not going to wash my feet, are you? You'll never wash my feet. Choir, I think you might have said that at choir rehearsal. You'll never wash my feet, right? <laughs> Did you catch what he said after that? If I do not wash your feet, you have no place with me. I'm just saying. It's in the Bible. No. <laughs> Peter is shocked. It's a shocking action. 
And in fact, we too ought to be shocked and disturbed even 2,000 years later, even in a culture that doesn't have these same ideas about rank, these same actions. It's still supposed to be a radical action. This love taking on form is supposed to shock us in that following Jesus means humility. It means emptying oneself for the sake of the other. It means, I think, for some of us, the humility to be served, to let another wash our feet. And for others, the reminder that it is also a call to the humility of sometimes having to be the servant, to empty ourselves and kneel down. Both of these things are things I think we struggle with, both to be served and to serve, and yet we are called to do both and to do it to one another in word and deed. We didn't get it in John's gospel, but in the other three, and we got it in the epistle lesson, he also gave them yet another lesson if they didn't fully grasp his words this night. I almost like to think of him saying, I'm going to give them everything I've got one last time to get it. When he took a loaf of bread at the meal and broke it and said, this is my body, my broken body, body given for you, offered for you. Take it. Remember me. When he took a cup of wine and said, this is my blood that will be shed, poured out for you. Drink it in remembrance of me. Now, at least those gathered around the table, except for Judas, remember, he also was there at that meal, too. None of the others could have foresaw what the next 24 hours were going to hold, that they were literally going to see his body broken, his blood poured out. I wonder what they must have thought that next day. Do you think any of them thought back to that meal? Thought, look what we Look what he gave us. Look what he did for us. Dear friends, dear church, that symbol, that holy action, that embodied presence is with us still tonight. Jesus still comes yet again, breaking that bread, pouring out that cup, saying to us as well, this is my body for you, for you, you who are hungry you who are weary, you who are beaten down, you who are sin-sick, you who think God cannot fully love me. Yes, it's for you, especially for you. That body broken on the cross, that blood poured out, that humble servant Lord who knelt down, words upon words, love one another. This do in remembrance of me, for you, word and in deed. Let us love Jesus as he loves us, and let us love one another as he loves us, with words and in deed. Amen.
on this night. We have heard our Lord's commandment to love one another as he loved us. We who receive God's love in Christ Jesus are called to love one another, to be servants to each other as Jesus became our servant. Our commitment to this loving service is so signified in the washing of the feet. Following the example of our Lord gave us on the night before his death. I invite you now to come forward for the washing of the feet, the mandatum.
of this holy day. Strengthen communities of faith in grace and courage to pursue justice and peace. God of mercy, hear our prayer. God, who brings life out of death, we give thanks for all the saints who have died and now live in you. United in the communion of saints, strengthen us through this Eucharist to follow faithfully. God of mercy, hear our prayer. Receive these prayers, loving God, for the sake of the one who loved us to the end, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer and Lord. Amen. Amen. On this night, our Lord Jesus said to his disciples and now says to us, My peace I give you, my peace I leave with you. Do not let your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. The peace of Christ be with you always. Let us share a sign of Christ's peace with one another. Christ loved us, who gave himself an offering and sacrifice to God.
thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and all places give praise and thanks to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Saviour Jesus Christ, whose suffering and death gave salvation to all. You gather your people around the tree of the cross, transforming death into life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join that unending hymn. Son, whom you sent in this the end of the ages, to save and redeem us, and to proclaim to us your will. He is your word inseparable from you, through whom you created all things, and in whom you take delight. He is your word sent from heaven to a virgin's womb. He there took on our nature and our lot, and was shown forth as your Son born of the Holy Spirit and of the Virgin Mary. He, our Lord Jesus, fulfilled all your holy will and won for you a holy people. He stretched out his hands in suffering in order to free from suffering those who trust in you. He is the one who handed over to a death he freely accepted in order to destroy death, to break the bonds of the evil one, to crush hell underfoot, to give light to the righteous, to establish his covenant, and to show forth the resurrection. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed to bread, gave thanks and said, Take heed, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. In the same manner also, when the supper was ended, he took the cup, gave thanks, and said, Take, drink, this is my blood of the new and everlasting covenant which is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Remembering then his death and resurrection, we take this bread and cup, giving you thanks, Father, that you have made us worthy to stand before you and to serve you as your priestly people. Send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts of your church, 
gathered into one all who share this bread and wine. Fill us with your Holy Spirit to establish our faith in truth, that we may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ, through whom all glory and honor are yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, none for Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Happy are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb.
let us pray. Lord God, in a wonderful sacrament, you have left us a memorial of your suffering and death. May this sacrament of your body and blood so work in us that the way we live may proclaim your redemption you have brought. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.